Hey, this is uh, Adam from eSports7.com, and I'm here with Axel Toss. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, after MLG decided not to do their daily StarCraft 2 content, uh, we didn't really see you a while for a while. Like, you know, uh, I think that but we didn't see you until Lone Star Clash. What were you doing in that time? Uh, good question. So, after MLG ended, it was a big kind of soul-searching period for me, naturally. Um, I dropped out of college to actually go do that. Um, and I had a really good time doing it, and it was a lot of fun. Like, I talk to people these days, and they're like, oh, we missed the times, so, you know, you and Axelab hanging out on MLG stream, doing, doing your thing. So it was, it was obviously a lot of fun. Uh, and then it ended, so I, I had to obviously think, a lot of, think, about, think through a lot of things and kind of decide where I see myself, in a sense. Um, so it, it was an interesting period where I was trying to decide um, whether or not to pursue other opportunities or go back to school kind of a thing, which is a very confusing thing because esports is so new, like it's hard to really make a perfect decision. Um, so with all that in mind, uh, my sister was actually applying for jobs in New York City at the time. So she actually ended up getting a job in New York City and took my old apartment. So, I, you know, I kind of saw that as a sign of sorts, not really, but like where I, you know, I just ended up leaving the city and I headed back to Texas um, to live with my parents and uh, try to finish school. So leading up to Lone Star, I was, um, you know, school was, I guess, was the idea as far as just taking classes to get closer to my degree. And then I'm not sure when Lone Star was in comparison to all this, but um, that, that was kind of the period there where I was just kind of like, all right, what do I do? I ended up moving back to Texas and just purely just taking classes at a local community college. Yeah. So by going back to Lone Star Clash, I mean, did that make you decide to like, I really want to go back into esports or are you still planning on going back to college? Uh, like what is, what is your goal? It, it's tough. Um, I, I just, you know, I want to be happy, right? I just want to be in a position where I can, I can do, I can, you know, use my talents the best way I can. Um, and I can, you know, be where I belong in a sense. And like I see a lot of cool things out there and I'm very torn in between what I want to do. And at the end of the day, like you get a lot of outside perspective too as far as, okay, getting your degree is really important. Getting your degree is, you know, you got to, you know, blah, 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 blah. Everyone goes through that. So, you know, originally my idea was, okay, let's just finish the degree. So right now I'm, I'm like six months away from finishing. Um, but, an, you know, another thing that happened was I have a really good friend in the industry named Andrew Tomlinson. Um, we went to Texas A&M together. We've been together since the beginning as far as the esports space. We helped put together Lone Star Clash 1, the very first one. And that, that's probably our, our proudest achievement, our proudest moment is helping that get off the ground. And it's a Texas thing too. Um, and he's living in Atlanta with Polton Violet. So one day he gave me a call and we just had a really uh, a deep conversation. We're like, because tr I'm just tr I'm trying to figure things out. Like I'm like, okay, what's the best thing to do right now? So I ended up um, saying, you know what? He's a friend. He could use my help because he's working on a lot of projects. So I decided to just drive to Atlanta from Texas, bring all my stuff. So that that right now that that's where my base camp is. I, I ended up making the drive to uh, Atlanta and now I'm living with Polton Violet and Andrew and. There's a studio in the basement, so we have a lot of uh, plans with that, and we're working on a lot of cool stuff. We have a lot of shows that we're, we're thinking about, a lot of concepts, a lot of business ideas. So right now, it's just kind of a, you know, just two buddies hanging out and trying to come up with stuff. So that's where I am right now. Man, that's a long drive. So you're living with Polt and Violet. I mean, I got asked, like, what is that like? Because those, those two guys are obviously have a very large fan base. They're loved so much in America. Um, what is it like, man? Any funny stories? Anything? I mean, you, you learn something new every day about them. Um, a lot of it is a Andrew, like, ha has a lot of influence on them as far as their manners and some stuff. So he'll kind of lead them to do funny stuff, which, which is pretty hilarious. Um, like, overall, it's great. Like, they're great roommates, a lot of fun. They're on their computers a lot, so, you know, whatever. Um, Pult's very studious, obviously. He's very intelligent. You know, you can, you know, sometimes we'll invite him onto the porch and we'll just have conversation. We'll just talk about intelligent things. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty fulfilling. Yeah, that, that's Pult, right? He'll listen to you and he'll understand everything you're saying and he'll provide good conversation. So that's Pult there. Violet's a guy who, he, he's very, like, He's very like how do you really like uh, kind of kind of collegey if that makes sense where okay. he's he's a guy who works out a lot he's into girls he's into going out <laughs> stuff like that so it's it's pretty interesting split of personality there and that's something we hope to deliver actually in the show that we're we're working on but with them um, but overall 
it's it's a lot of fun living with them. And Pult, another another quick little thing about Pult. I, I, I have a thing where, you know, Pult wins everything. He's kind of known as the guy who wins. He's a StarCraft II player. He's amazing. He's a beast. So I, in my life or in my experience with him, I try to do everything I can to just compete with him at anything else. <laughs> so, like, you look at Mario Kart or Smash Brothers or any type of competition. Like, I'll be like, Pult, let's play a game. I bet I can throw this stick and hit that log over there. And then I'll just try to compete with him just for fun. And then, I, and then when I beat him, I'm like, we just have a really fun thing going on where, where I try to beat him and... You know, I make fun of him because I'd be, I'm like, I'm better than you, Pult, kind of a thing. So it's just a fun thing we do, but it's it's an awesome dynamic we have at the house. A lot of fun with living with them. I mean, it definitely sounds like, I mean, that sounds like, I want maybe like a party every night kind of thing. I mean, it sounds awesome. Yeah. But you mentioned the show. Yeah. Um, I believe the, they released some info about it, but could you tell us more about it? So a couple trailers are out. We're pretty excited about it. Um, we really want to do it right. That's like... That's so important for us because when it comes to esports and it comes to content or it comes to production or it comes to videos, whatever, um, a lot of people are doing it right, but we're, we're both pretty ambitious and we both have lofty goals and we have big ideas about what we want with the scene and the, and the sport and what we want with Pult and Violet. So we've spent a lot of time really just thinking it through, coming up with a good concept and making sure that we deliver properly. So we're hoping for an October release date right now for the show, which isn't too far away. Um, and yeah, it's basically just a, a way for people to get a good sense of who Pult and Violet are at a little bit of a deeper level, and also a way for the community to get involved. So we had community members apply to enter the CSN training camp, is what we're calling it, where they get coaching, personal in-depth coaching from Pult and Violet. And then there's a competition within that where the best student and students, stuff happens with them. So it's, it's a reality show of sorts involving Pult and Violet. And of course, I'm in there doing some casting and stuff, whatever. We have Winter Starcraft involved, um, doing some casting and, and, and stuff as well. He's been helping a lot with the show. Overall, we just want to create something cool that people haven't seen before that's good for the scene and good for the community. Wow, that sounds really interesting. Can't wait to see it. Um, but going back to this event, you know, you're usually a caster, you casted so much with MLG, but this event, you're more of like an interviewer slash host. Um, was that a different experience for you? Like, how was that going for you, making that transition? I, I love doing new things, and I love diversifying myself as much as possible. And, and, you know, I just like seeing how I do. So, it was a good experience. I mean, it's, it's not easy when you're interviewing, especially Korean players. You know, you have to go through a translator, so you can't really get as deep as you might want to. Um, but it's you know it's a lot of fun. I'm happy for any opportunity that I'm presented in any medium kind of a thing. I just I love um, just getting out there, and I love I guess working quote unquote. I'm, I I try to pride myself as a really hard worker, so anything I can do, I try to do. Uh, so you know I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to come out here and help Red Bull put on an amazing production. I think they do a really good job. I think if you're thinking about top level productions in all these sports events, Red Bull has to be up there. So it's truly a, a pleasure and a privilege to be involved with that. And as an interviewer, you know, it's, it's something a little bit new, something I've done before, I have experience with. Hopefully I do a good job. I'm always open to feedback, but it's fun. That's good to hear. I mean, you've been doing a great job. I think that everyone in the audience would agree, too. Um, but going along with that, I mean, you've just, you've worn a lot of hats, you know. You've, you've been to places here and there. You've uh, had many jobs. What would you say is, like, your favorite role? What role do you really like? And is there a specific role that you want to stay in, or are you... Or are you going to go with your mentality of just trying new things, see what you like? That's a tough question, man, because esports is such a new thing where there's so many different things you can do actually within the space. And I don't know my perfect role. I, I, I know what I like doing. I like influencing the scene, and I like being a part of it, and I like helping create good products. I don't know where the end goal is there. I don't know where the end, end of the line is there. I like doing new things. I like trying new things, of course. Um, just being a part of it all, ultimately, is, is what I really love. So, you know, tell me to do something, I'll do it kind of a thing, right? I, I, is that a good answer? I don't know. I mean, that's a good answer. I mean, if anything, it shows you have passion, you know, and that's what we all need in the scene. Um, I mean, so this is obviously the end of the event. We're going towards BlizzCon, but we're going towards next year, too. What do you think is going to happen for StarCraft in 2015, especially with the announced WCS changes, things like that? I'm really hopeful for the StarCraft 2 future, and a lot of people are like, oh, you're because you're a StarCraft caster, you're blah, blah, blah. Um, honestly, I think 
on paper, everywhere you look, esports is getting bigger. No one is going to disagree with that. And I think by proxy, StarCraft II will too. I think it's it's I think it's pretty inevitable. So I feel like I really I really do personally like the the changes that Blizzard has made. I think it'll increase the diversity of the player pool. I think it'll increase storylines. And I think overall it'll be a better product to present to the mainstream who we're trying to get involved with everything. I love everything that League of Legends is doing, Dota 2 is doing, CSGO is doing, it's putting esports on the map in a big way. And I feel like StarCraft 2 is involved. A lot of people say StarCraft 2 is dead or whatever, right? Which it, it irks me. It, it makes me a little mad. Not mad per se, but it like it annoys me a little bit, right? Um, I'm very hopeful for the future of StarCraft 2. I think Blizzard like, they, there's so many good people at Blizzard, and at the end of the day, I feel like they, they do know what they're doing, and that I feel like StarCraft II is on a good path. And I feel like there's a lot of personalities involved in the scene that are very motivated and very personally attached to every part of the scene. Obviously, Total Biscuit is a name out there out there. Day9 is a name out there out there. Artosis is a name out there out there. Like, there's a lot of great names out there that have a lot of momentum behind them that really want the scene to be big and really want it to really want to see it grow as well as a lot of really passionate community members like you perhaps so as far as the future of starcraft 2 i'm hopeful man i think it'll be big i'm right there with you man uh, uh people always joke dead game but you know you got to be optimistic and i i hope it personally grows a lot too but you know your your famous casting partner Oxlav, he's he's done a lot of uh, other esports too. You know, I know he's done a bit of coverage on Infinite Crisis and things like that. Have you delved into any other esports? Have you done any coverage for those things? Yes. So as as far as StarCraft Two is concerned, I'm I got in late enough where I was able to get a good a good start within the scene, the StarCraft Two scene. I was able to get a job at MLG, which is great. But I'm still not, and I'll be honest, like I'm still not necessarily considered near the top of the depth chart, if you will, as far as StarCraft Two commentary or whatever is concerned. So as far as my personal future is concerned, uh, you know, I think diversifying no matter what is very important. So I certainly have, you know, dived into different esports because I think it's just a logical thing to do. Um, so and I love games. I love all games. I love competition. I love the all the esports medium in general. So um, Infinite Crisis, yeah, I've I've actually been to Boston to Turbine to actually help cast with some Infinite, with with Nick. I've casted with Nick last week. I did actually, which a lot of you, yeah, me and me and Nick casted last week, uh, Infinite Crisis. So. Um, the first thing I look for is, is just cool people. I love working with cool people, motivated people, and there's a lot of cool people in the esports space trying to make really cool things happen. To get involved with, at least. Um, Smite is actually in the local Atlanta area, and I think that's a really cool concept of a game, so that, that's pretty cool. So if you're asking me what games I'm playing right now, I'm just trying to identify those cool games that are trying to make a run, and, and I, love I love helping with grassroots type initiatives where I can really identify the good and genuine people behind particular products and helping them succeed. So, um, you know, as far as different games are concerned, if I like it, if I enjoy it, you know, I'll play a little bit and I'll try to see how, if I can get involved. If I can, if not, it's fine, but I feel like I do have a certain amount of talents that can help um, a lot of different games and, and maybe I can, you know, I really love commentating too, so it's like helping hype and helping play-by-play -play all these different games. It's fun too, and it it helps me think a bit more about stuff, helps me get more experience, and helps me diversify even more. So that's that's basically what's happening right now. I mean, you you're all over the place, man. It's crazy. Um, I think as a final question, I have to ask you, man. Like when you challenge Pult, who comes out on top of a lot of these things? I mean, <laughs> Mario Party is a game that like people say they're good at it, but one one thing and it's all over. I mean, if you ask both of us, we're both going to have different answers, first of all, right? Um, at the end of the day, I win most of the time. There you have it. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time, Axel Toss. Um, are there any shout-outs you want to give? Anything you want to say to your fans at all? My twin sister's here. Yeah. We... Hi, twin sister. Um, family. Family's awesome. Call your mom or dad. They're cool. You know, I, I think esports is awesome because it's there's a lot of really passionate people that can get involved pretty quickly and can really start making waves within the scene. And that's why I really like being involved. Um, and I, I love going to events and meeting new people. So shout out to all those people trying to make stuff happen. In a, in, like honestly, shout out to all those people who really try to you know try to identify their talents and see how they apply to the esports space and really just just have fun and and follow what what they love. I think too many people out there might judge too quickly as far as you know they read certain comments on a website and then they immediately change their mindset on what's going on and then that's a you know a toxic mentality that is able to spread pretty quickly and that annoys me a lot so I really do appreciate all the genuine people out there who are trying to 
you know, follow what they believe in, I guess. And, and that's really cool. So otherwise, shout outs, I guess, if you want more info on me, my Twitter is Axel Toss. Um, otherwise, just keep playing games and having fun, I think. All right, there you have it. Uh, you won't hear any arguments with me with that uh, statement. So this is Adam from esportsheaven.com. Stay tuned for more coverage of Red Bull and all other esports. Thanks.